Greetings from beautiful Colorado. My name is Ned Nikolov, and I'm a physical scientist with the U.S. Forest Service. Today I would like to discuss with you the greenhouse effect, the atmospheric greenhouse effect, what it is and how it works. The statements I'm about to make are coming from research that I conducted on my own time, and therefore do not represent the opinions or official positions of the U.S. Forest Service or any other government agency for that matter. The macro-level pressure-temperature relationship across planetary bodies discovered by our research has fundamental implications for the current climate theory and our understanding of climate drivers. These are as follows. First, the atmospheric thermal effect is a form of compression heating caused by air pressure that is independent of atmospheric composition. Pressure as a force applied over a unit area enhances the energy received from the sun since energy is a function of force and the kinetic energy of a gas measured in joules is defined by the product of pressure times volume according to the gas law. In other words, the atmosphere warms the surface adiabatically, not radiatively as believed for nearly 200 years. Second, the atmospheric infrared back radiation is a byproduct of the atmospheric thermal effect, and as such it does not drive Earth's climate. The latter is controlled by the sun and total air pressure, which is a function of atmospheric mass and gravity. This means that the radiative greenhouse effect does not exist in reality. The confusion originated from the fact that the downwelling infrared radiation is easily measurable and has been measured since the 19th century, while the adiabatic pressure-induced heating is hidden as an underlying cause and requires a cross-planetary analysis like ours to detect. The adiabatic compression heating of the surface and the lower troposphere explains why the flux of atmospheric infrared back radiation on Earth is 42% larger than the total absorbed solar flux by the planet. On Venus, the discrepancy between these fluxes is extreme due to a 93 bar atmospheric pressure. The infrared back radiation at the Venusian surface exceeds 12,500 watts per square meter, while the absorbed solar flux is only 65 watts per square meter. The atmosphere does not trap radiant heat. It adiabatically enhances the absorbed solar energy through the force of air pressure, which is a mechanism deeply misunderstood in climate science. Third, contrary to the claim made by the greenhouse theory, the Earth's climate has no tipping points, since the baseline global temperature of a planet is a smooth function of solar luminosity, distance to the sun, and total atmospheric pressure. Fourth, Non-condensing trace gases such as carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide have no measurable impact on the global surface temperature due to their minuscule partial pressures in the atmosphere. Fifth, human carbon emissions cannot in principle affect global climate because they do not alter atmospheric pressure in any significant way. Sixth, the bulk of planetary albedo is a byproduct or consequence of the climate system and does not control the global surface temperature. However, a small fraction of the albedo is modulated by solar activity and impacts planetary temperature on the cadal to centennial timescales. We'll address this topic again later. It should be pointed out that the current climate theory does not consider direct thermodynamic effects of atmospheric pressure on global temperature. In the greenhouse concept, pressure only impacts surface temperature through the broadening of infrared absorption bands of greenhouse gases. Thus, the role of pressure as a force controlling the temperature of a gas dictated by the gas law has mostly been ignored in climate science. Our discovery draws the researchers' attention back to this fundamental thermodynamic driver. The pressure-temperature relationship discovered in our analysis of planetary data is qualitatively quite similar in terms of shape to the pressure-temperature functions known in other physical systems as illustrated by this slide. This gives credence to the notion that our empirical model describes a macro-level physical reality. Our discovery about the physical nature of the atmospheric thermal effect, currently known under the incorrect name greenhouse effect, is described in this 2017 paper, which I strongly recommend to everyone interested in the technical details of this new climate science paradigm. The paper is available as an open access online. You may notice that the regression coefficients of our empirical pressure temperature model presented in this video differ slightly from those listed in the paper. That's a result of using more recent and better baseline temperature data for some planetary bodies such as Venus, Titan, and Earth. 
Although the direct effect of pressure on gas temperature is fundamental to classical thermodynamics and a part of standard atmospheric physics, pressure is not an explicit component of the current climate theory exclusively focused on the purity of radiative greenhouse effect. As a result, climate scientists do not consider air pressure to be a driver of surface temperature except via its effect on the broadening of gas absorption lines in the infrared spectrum, which is not a thermodynamic phenomenon. Hence, it might be informative to discuss some examples illustrating the critical role of pressure in determining atmospheric temperatures. The most common effect of pressure on air temperature is the observed cooling with increasing altitude in the troposphere. The decrease of air pressure with height is the reason for the drop of ambient temperature at a rate of about 6 degrees Celsius per kilometer as one ascends in elevation. This explains why tall mountain peaks, located even at the equator such as Mount Kilimanjaro, are cold enough to support permanent glaciers while their foothills host lush subtropical flora and fauna. The temperature drop with elevation is called adiabatic lapse rate. The word adiabatic means changing the internal kinetic energy and temperature of a gas parcel without gain or loss of heat, that is, without a heat exchange with the surrounding environment. Adiabatic heating and cooling are only possible through changes in the internal gas pressure. Thus, the negative adiabatic lapse rate observed in the troposphere is the result of a temperature change with pressure and the decrease of pressure with height. In mathematical terms, dt dz equals dt dp times dp dz. The vertical convection in the Earth's atmosphere is nearly an adiabatic process since air parcels heated by the surface cool mostly by rising up and expanding into lower pressure levels aloft. While the decrease of pressure with altitude is the reason for the existence of a lapse rate in the troposphere, the magnitude of this lapse rate depends strongly on the intensity of solar heating, atmospheric moisture, and wind speed. Standard dry air has a lapse rate of minus 9.8 Celsius per kilometer, while saturated moist air cools at a rate of about 5 degrees Celsius per kilometer. The environmental lapse rate usually falls between these two extremes. Intense solar heating during summertime can cause a super adiabatic lapse rate that is greater than minus 10 degree per kilometer. Some climate scientists claim that the lapse rate is caused by radiative properties of greenhouse gases, which is thermodynamically completely false. Perhaps the most striking example of pressure heating in the atmosphere are high pressure systems called omega blocks or heat domes that are formed by a wavy and meandering jet stream. One such event recently occurred over the Pacific Northwest. A high-pressure system got lodged for several days over Washington State and British Columbia, Canada at the end of June of 2021, causing a record-smashing heat wave with surface temperatures soaring over 43 degrees Celsius or 110 degrees Fahrenheit in most places. The town of Lytton in western Canada, nested between mountain ranges, experienced little temperatures of 49.4 degrees Celsius or 121 degrees Fahrenheit on June 30th. In a few hours, the excessive heat stripped trees of their green leaves and ignited fires that consumed 90% of the small town. This incredible heat was caused by a sinking air that the high-pressure system pushed down from higher altitudes and adiabatically compressed near the surface. Another contributing factor were the easterly catabatic winds generated by the high-pressure system due to a clockwise rotation of the air that came down the mountain slope and also got heated by compression. Some commentators rushed to link this rare heat wave to anthropogenic climate change, but the reality is that atmospheric CO2 played no role in this event. We conclude this presentation by highlighting some principal differences between the greenhouse hypothesis originated in the 19th century and the new Nikolov Zeller climate concept based on a planetary temperature model derived from modern observations obtained throughout the solar system via a robust mathematical analysis. The greenhouse theory assumes that the Earth's atmosphere raises the global surface temperature by 33 degree Kelvin, while Nikolov and Zeller found the atmospheric thermal effect to be around 90 degree Kelvin, or 2.7 times stronger than assumed for nearly 100 years. The ENZI model fully explains this thermal enhancement in the context of a cosmic continuum defined by six planetary bodies spanning the breadth of the solar system. The greenhouse theory claims that the atmosphere reduces the surface infrared cooling to space 
through trapping of radiant heat by greenhouse gases. Nikola von Zeller discovered that the atmosphere heats the surface adiabatically through a gravitational compression of air. The resulting air pressure enhances the energy received from the sun by adding force to the gas system, a mechanism that is misunderstood and ignored in the current climate science. Since the atmosphere is a convective fluid operating in an open system, it cannot and does not trap heat. The greenhouse hypothesis argues that the global surface temperature is sensitive to changes in greenhouse gas concentrations, hence human carbon emissions can impact climate. Nikola von Zeller found that the global baseline temperature of planetary bodies is independent of atmospheric composition. Therefore, non-condensing trace gases have no measurable influence on climate due to their small partial pressures. The greenhouse concept regards atmospheric carbon dioxide as a key driver of climate on all time scales. The NZ concept identified different drivers at different time scales. Over decades to centuries, the global climate is controlled by small fluctuations of cloud albedo around a baseline induced directly or indirectly by sun's magnetic activity. On time scales of thousands to millions of years, variations in total atmospheric mass and surface air pressure change the planet's global baseline temperature and meridional temperature gradients, creating the polar amplification phenomenon observed in the geological records. Next time someone asks you to reduce your carbon footprint to prevent climate change, point them to the science presented in this video. Organizations such as CO2 Living propagandize the saving of Earth's climate as a noble cause that requires drastic changes in our personal lifestyle ranging from driving less and unplugging our electrical devices to stop eating meat and replacing our laundry dryers with a line drying of clothes. This is a vivid example of how a physically wrong science theory can unnecessarily complicate our lives by giving rise to false moral values. The Earth's climate is not in human control since it is not affected by invisible trace gases and we don't need to sacrifice our economic development and standard of living trying to stop climate change, which is unstoppable. However, we need to preserve the cleanness of our environment for it to sustain life and civilization growth while realizing that pollution and climate change are separate issues and that carbon dioxide is not a pollutant but a life-giving gas.